Today we're going to look at the next Mission US game. Mission U.S. is a series of online games designed to immerse young people in American history. Mission U.S. allows students to take on the identity of a particular young person in the past. Through this character, they're meeting people and making decisions that are changing the character's relationships, job prospects, and ultimate outcome. They witness uh, key events and sometimes participate in them. And the decisions that they make along the way impact their own story. And we think this character-driven approach uh, really resonates with young people. The first three missions span 100 years of history, putting students in the shoes of a 1770 Boston apprentice, a teenage girl who escaped slavery in 1850, and a young Cheyenne boy experiencing Fox westward expansion in the 1860s. Little Fox, come. There is a problem. In the newest mission, students play Lena Brodsky, a Russian Jewish immigrant who comes to New York City in 1907 and is swept up in the growing labor movement. You have no time to waste. Sure. Mm. You're hungry. You got no money. We are grateful to have received a Fast Track Small Business Innovation Research Award from the Institute of Education Sciences. This will let us expand the Mission US series and offer our content on a tablet platform. You know, with students that are diverse learners and they have diverse backgrounds, you need to be a little bit unorthodox and find different resources and different avenues for the students to really get into the material. When I found Mission US, it, it just changed my approach and it changed a lot of the students' interest level and ability to participate and get into the material. Years ago it was difficult because they were all by themselves without family. After seven days at sea, I was exhausted. The rocking of the ship made it hard to keep down what little food I ate. It's really interesting that they give Lena an uh, accent because here, like, when you talk to people and they see that you have an accent, they know that you are an immigrant, you're not born here. So they start treating you different. I see Mission US as a jumping off point for all students. Some of them are very visual learners, some can't read very well, and by playing the games from the beginning to the end, everyone is able to get something out of the game. They're able to bring something to our conversations, they're able to bring something to our class that probably, from a textbook, they would miss. Most of us are here because we're looking for a better life, not because we were forced off our land, but um, as she was in the game, she was forced off by the Tsar from Russia, and. Um, so that kind of makes an impact on her prison life as well. Mission US games are really designed as a launch pad for teachers and students to do a deep dive into the uh, history content and skills of each game. What allows them to do this is a really rich and varied set of classroom materials. Teachers can take what they need and adapt it for their students. On the back of your paper is your first diary entry as Lena. The website provides a variety of activities to accompany each part of the game, including review questions, document-based activities, vocabulary activities, and writing prompts. By going deep into the content, students are gaining critical comprehension, writing, and analytical skills they need for mandated assessments. I don't see Mission US as a supplement to my curriculum. I use it as the crux of my curriculum where everything branches off of the game. Well, Lena talked about discrimination in her, in her country, right? And like how Jewish people were killed by the Russians. But um, I'm just wondering, do you guys think she's gonna face discrimination also in New York City? I think um, the answer is probably yes. Cause even today there's some people still like discrimination, they still have discrimination on others. I see the game as as a way just to provide exactly what a textbook would provide, but in a more interesting and a, a more well-rounded way. I like the game because it's like you're under the skin of that person and you're living those memories and within the person, so taking decisions, depending on the decisions you make, the you know, consequences of those decisions you made then will affect uh, the game. Playing a game helps you to actually 
put yourself in the character's shoes. You walk around, you know how that person lived, um, you know, like your actions, you're responsible for your actions, and you get to see the reactions, how people would react to you, what would happen as a result. So it's, it's very important. A textbook doesn't do that. A textbook doesn't help you to relate to other people's experiences. We've studied Mission U.S. in over 75 middle school classrooms across the country, and students have consistently performed better in tests of historical knowledge and historical thinking skills when they use the game and curriculum in comparison to peers in non-game classrooms. We see an improvement difference of 10 to 15 percent, which is pretty impressive for this kind of work. <laughs> Mission US was originally developed in Flash, which is great for online streaming, but unfortunately means it can't be played on tablets. The SBIR award is allowing us to retool our engine and make sure that future missions are available in both environments. We're hearing from teachers, so there's a lot more iPads in the classrooms these days, uh, and they're really looking for something to play on it. We also think the iPad version is going to really help us go beyond the classroom. The iPad and the App Store are just great venues uh, to get our games in the hands of kids across the country. But more importantly for us, in our early prototyping sessions, we're seeing kids collaborating in ways that they don't when they're playing on laptops. In our research under the SBIR grant, we're finding that a prototype tablet version of the game really helps enhance the active learning elements in the Mission U.S. classroom. Students using the tablet often turn to share and compare where they are in the game with a peer. And that kind of collaboration and sharing is something we really didn't see so much in the other classrooms. I don't know, like, it seems like singing is not a good skill, yeah. you know. I don't think she could sing because, like, the language. Mm -hmm. She didn't know how to speak English very well. So I would choose I would go at numbers. So which one do you want to choose? Mm, I think, like, see, I can see it. Uh, it's good because, um, you know, we're close to, from what I know from history, mm -hmm. we're close yeah. to the industrialization era. Okay, let's so. The second thing the award is going to let us do is expand the series into new areas of American history. So for the fifth mission, we'll be visiting the Great Depression, uh, where the player will take the roles of a young brother and sister trying to support their family. It'll all come together when we use our new technology and our new content to simultaneously launch Mission 5 online and on the tablet. By bringing Mission US content to multiple platforms, we'll both expand our reach and give students opportunities to engage more deeply with American history. So even though they were going in different places and doing different things on their iPads, they still were working with each other and, and negotiating with each other and bouncing ideas off of each other, which for a teacher, you can't hope for better than that. <laughs>